I'm just gonna wait a couple of minutes so we leave people the time to join us slowly. Um, yeah, it, it always takes some time for these things, but um, let me just say that I'm very happy and I'm super excited and, and super honored to have the chance to interview these two um, wonderful, brilliant and strong women, which are Veronica and Claudia. So thank you so much guys for agreeing to do this with us. And yeah, I thank think- Thank you for inviting us. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, and I think I can start slowly introducing myself while we still wait for everyone to join us. Um, so my name is Paula, and as you can guess, tonight I am representing Genovope. For those of you who have never heard of us or who are wondering who are we and what are we, um, there are many answers to this question. The simple one would be Genovope is a blog, um, and this is the easiest way to explain this, to explain it. But we don't like this answer so much as a team because it doesn't fully express the, the complex reality that we are building. Um, so we would define Genova as a common space where we share information, knowledge, thoughts on topics that are close to our heart. And we produce different kinds of content from articles to podcast episodes or even initiatives like this one tonight. Um, so we produce a variety of content in a variety of topics, and we usually gather them in under six labels that you can find on our website, genovap.com. And these labels are uh, politics, economics, um, people, territories, culture, and environment. And yeah, you can just um, explore our website and go find your favorite topic and explore what you like the most. And so, yeah, we produce a, a variety of content in a variety of topics and also in a variety of languages. This is our um, most important um, criteria, let's say, for uh, producing content. If you go check out our manifesto, you will see that it has been translated in 17 languages. And I was very impressed um, by this thing when I joined the team recently. And so we make sure always to produce content in English and in at least uh, one, two, or even three other languages. And um, we are always a welcoming reality. So if you are curious about us, if you want to know us better, if you want to uh, collaborate in some way, like um, writing articles or um, proposing another initiative like this one, uh, you just feel free to reach out on our website or we have an email address, which is uh, contact us at genovop.com. And you can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Spotify, and soon on YouTube too. Um, yeah, so as you can guess, we are a bunch of students, young professionals who are from different countries, have studied in different um, domains, are engaged in different fields and working in different fields. And we sort of not only produce content and share information, but we also build some conversation and discussion about um, the future. So having bearing in mind a global future and a better future for Europeans, but also for, for people outside Europe. And so we share experiences and points of view. And this, this project was actually born out of an Erasmus experience. So that's, that already gives you an idea of what we had in mind for this project. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how our motto was born, um, Engage Exchange Europe. And um, yeah, we just came back from a summer break. So we, we just refreshed our website, we changed the logo, we welcome new members like myself. And we are very excited about these live events. We had two already. One was about feminism and cultural engagement. The other one was about human rights and we had um, the Amnesty International Group of the University of Bologna with us. And tonight we are focusing on Poland because um, this issue, I think everybody knows about it, but not everyone gets why are these protests going on. And so we need some context and that's why we asked two experts here. Um, so I'm really happy about this because you guys are in the country, are Polish and you are involved in international relations. And Veronica and Claudia are from the Polish Forum of uh, Young Diplomats. And respectively, Veronica is the president and actually they had elections last week, so this is her second term. Congratulations on that. <laughs> and Claudia is the spokesperson, so we're gonna have a chat 
uh, with them about um, what is going on in Poland. I'm just going to ask you guys maybe to briefly introduce yourself and talk about your organization, and then we can start with the uh, questions. Yes, of course, maybe I'll start. Uh, so as you said, I'm Veronica. I am a president of the Polish Forum of Young Diplomats. I wouldn't call myself an expert, but I'm Polish. I'm living in Poland and I know how the situation is looking like. So I can tell you how it looks like from the Polish perspective, not from the expert perspective, I guess. Uh, maybe I'll tell something about our organization because it's also very important for us. We are a Polish wide organization. We connect young people students and young professionals who are interested in continuing their career to work in international environment, not only in diplomacy, but also in different fields. We are organizing many projects, including international ones. Uh, for example, uh, recently we've launched a project of the NATO Youth Delegate Program. And uh, yes, we are very excited to be here. We are also in the social media, but I guess Claudia will tell more about it because it's her field. So yes, thank you for inviting us here. Thank you. Okay, so that will be my turn. Um, I'm Claudia and I'm really happy to be here uh, with you tonight. Um, I guess uh, a short, uh, a short uh, brief, uh, really um, introduction of myself would be that I am a European law and European, and European studies graduate so be sure that I will be talking about European Union <laughs> a lot tonight uh, and just as Veronica said I wouldn't call myself an expert as well uh, I would uh, I would refer to what I'm going to say tonight more of a, a citizen perspective um, and uh, just as Veronica mentioned, uh, our forum, uh, the Polish Forum uh, of Young Diplomats, uh, you can find on various social media, just uh, to give you an example, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, but also LinkedIn, and also have a YouTube. So feel free to uh, follow <laughs> if you want to know what's going on in Poland and Thank you so much. Yeah, maybe you're not experts, but you're more expert than me <laughs> on these things. Um, so yeah, I would say we can start with the first question. Uh, we can start from the basics, actually. So what is going on in Poland? We need to give people some context and to uh, unpack really the situation there. Um, okay, uh, maybe this time I could start. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, Okay, so this is actually um, difficult to say what's going on in Poland right now because there's a lot happening here for many different reasons. Uh, but I guess what we wanted to talk about today is uh, mostly abortion rights and LGBTQI rights. Um, well, even to answer this question only from these two perspectives, only considering these two, uh, we need a little context uh, so um, let me tell you something about the abortion uh, dispute happening right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, in Poland, abortion was, or actually still is, I'm going to tell you why it slash still is in, in about <laughs> a minute. Uh, it was legal in three and only three cases. And that was, you can see, it was a threat to mother's uh, health or life. If the pregnancy was the result of a criminal act, such as rape, but not only, and if they if there were uh, indicator indications of um, se severe uh, impairment of the fetus or incurable life-threatening diseases, mm -hmm. uh, so we used to call this um, the abortion compromise. And if I'm not wrong, the bill was passed in 1993. Um, our constitution, though, is from 1997, which is important. Um, you will know why in a second as well. Um, so in October this year, uh, the Polish Constitutional Court uh, ruled that abortion, because of the last reason, uh, um, incurable diseases of the fetus, uh, was unconstitutional. So that would mean simply that it, it's illegal. Uh, so 
what most women in uh, in Poland went furious. Our current government already tried to uh, make the abortion right more in 2016, I think, and um, they stopped it. They didn't do that because women were, were protesting for, if I remember co correctly, weeks. Uh, so uh, when women found out about this year, uh, which was, you know, it was the court, and so it, it it's not like it was discussed with the society. Um, well, they said enough that it was too much for them, and what they said was also that the government took away, well, not really government, since, since it was the court, but the women in, interpreted it as the government mm -hmm. doing. Uh, so they said that the government took away their right to choose if they want to give birth to a baby that is soon going to die or immediately going to die. Um, so it's also, uh, in my opinion, worth mentioning that uh, the government was actually obliged to publish this order, this ruling within 14 days, they didn't do. Uh, and actually problematic as well because the decision of the court does not have any legal power if it's unpublished so that's why i said um was slash still is to do to uh, decide uh, to work um i mean to do the abortion during pregnancy if uh if the baby is going to um uh, is going to um be born with um severe uh, impairment. Um, so uh, the decision was unpublished, meaning it doesn't have legal power, but at the same time, the government, by not publishing the decision, broke the law. Mm. Um, so this is a very problematic situation because women, they don't want the decision to be published. At the same time, they want the government to, uh, you know, just respect the law. Um, so the result of all that was where protests or still are protests on the streets. Uh, and they had they have been going on for about two months right now because I think the court decided that sometime around the 20th of October. So that would be almost two months. And uh, that's the abortion case, but uh, the LGBTQI rights, I'll, uh, I'll give the floor to Veronica because she knows more about it than I do. Yes, thank you. Uh, so what, when it comes to, if I shall paint again the context of uh, the Polish reality, uh, in Poland, the, Poland is more of the conservative country. We don't have legal same-sex marriages, and et cetera. Um, but what you probably heard is that last year around 100 towns and regions declared themselves as country as city free of LGBTQ ideology. Right. Yeah. Yes. And so despite many protests and different also external opinions, uh, we still have those LGBTQ free zones. Uh, for example, there was this reaction of European Union that right now they, those towns don't have fundings, but there it is still happening. Also this year we had uh, a uh, presidential election and during campaign, campaign was generally focused on LGBTQ community. There are unfortunately a lot of opinions and discussions, including homophobic opinions, uh, during elections and merging things happened in September when there were protests of LGBTQ community against the discrimination, against what the politicians are saying. And there were some cases, unfortunately, of police brutality. So this is what is happening. But also I must say that it's not like that, that all of the Polish people, whole society is homophobic and it's the worst country to live in. Because of course it's not. There are also cities like Warsaw, which signed the LGBTQ declaration, which is supporting uh, LGBTQ community. And so this is one of the many examples of the division of our country, because our country is very, very polarized. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, unfortunately, this is, I think, a reality that is present in many countries um, right now in this um, present society, I would say. Um, and what would you say has been the response by different actors? So like, for instance, uh, social movements or the government itself and the church, as you said, that you're a conservative country and the church has a true impact uh, in your national reality. What would you say has been the different reactions? You mean reactions to protests of women or, yeah. Uh, so we have this huge polarization, which is also seen during our presidential election because it's like basically 50-50. So during the strikes, the society is also very divided. And when one of the side of Poland is protesting, the second side is all against it. But right now we have more difficult times because it's coronavirus times. Uh, there are people who are not protesting because of pandemics, because it's very dangerous. And so many people are against the protests right now, or they would say that it would be better if you would protest just online. There are also, uh, there were also nationalist protests who, well, they are conservative and they are of course against abortion. So this is why they were, they were protesting against the women who are protesting against the abortion because you know it's a very complicated thing. When it comes to government, uh, well, we can all, we should also say that at the beginning that our organizations are political. So it is also the yeah. for us to, to acknowledge what is in general happening. But when it comes to what uh, general themes of the government which are going, it's that they are some of the members of the government are condemning the protests uh, of women, Some, but in general, the government didn't say that the women shouldn't protest. They didn't condemn it in general. They are just saying that we, sh we shouldn't protest because it's dangerous. Of course, there are some members who are saying that we should protect the Catholic faith and everything, but mm -hmm. as everywhere, there are many, many different opinions. Claudia, would you like to add something to it? Yeah, I think I would just like to add the fact that um, you should know that um, historically the church has a really important role uh, in this in Polish politics society, just like life in general, because of what happened in like during the communism when uh, people were not allowed to go to church. So uh, um, so pretty much church was then supporting um the opposition so like the democratic opposition democratic yeah, well, let's say that opposition the solidarność movement um mm -hmm. so i guess that this is also why um there's still a lot a lot a lot of a lot of that is still in our hearts and in the minds of the politicians that are ruling the country right now um, because they're about this, um, like they're about old enough right now to remember what happened then. Um, so church has, or should I say, used to have, um, right now, um, a huge respect um, ongoing. That uh, that kind of so like it states that they are apolitical, um, but. Uh, to be honest, they do have a lot to say, uh, even in our uh, in our politics. So I guess uh, that is also worth mentioning. And one more thing um, is that um, the social movements had different reactions, of course. But I think it's uh, uh, important to say that there is this trend going on right now, which is kind of worrying me. Uh, that some of the movements have this. Um, you're either 100% 100 with or against us attitude. Okay. Um, so the social movements are kind of closing, you know, like um, they, uh, they also seem to um, disagree with everybody else that has a different opinion, even in, in one matter. If, you know, if they have like, um, 10 different, um, I don't know, uh, matters that they're talking about and uh, 10 different postulates that they will, they will, they will want you to agree with them 100% if you're supporting them. 
And I think that's kind of worrying because you can't really find 100,000 people that think the same in 10 different matters. So I, I guess that's also worrying. Yeah. And I think this is also contributing to the polarization that we were speaking about. Exactly. Before. Yeah. And so this is as far as the, the situation within the country is concerned. I would like you to, maybe we mentioned it with Veronica before a little bit, but we should unpack a little bit what is uh, the EU doing about uh, this protest and the reactions within the country. So what has been said or done outside so far? Well, there are still many protests supporting uh, Polish women and protests uh, around Europe and around the globe, actually. Uh, when it comes to countries, there were some opinions which were supporting it, but um, <laughs> it's also uh, tough here to say what, because I think, correct me, Claudia, if I'm wrong, that there weren't any one, um, any like uh, opinion of you in general on the whole strikes and what is happening? I think there were European Parliament resolutions both concerning abortion and the LGBT, LGBTQI rights. I'm sorry, I yeah. really speak fast, so I always, <laughs> I always mistake when. Yes, I do that, that yes, but concerning the protests right now, I I'm not sure, but yes, but yeah. Mm -hmm. It yeah, is but, still on uh, the mouth of the whole Europe, what is happening in Poland. There are people who are supporting Polish women. There are different opinions in different countries, like, for example, in Ireland, which used to be as conservative as Poland is right now. And yeah, it's, it's, and here it's still a, still a lot of things are happening. A lot of changes are still going on. So it's difficult to say what is one European opinion about what is happening here. There are countries who are supporting it. There are citizens who are also connecting themselves to support protests. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but there are different opinions all around Europe. Yeah. I guess uh, I guess I would only like to mention that um, when we were talking about LGBTQI rights, that um, there were some kind of, I wouldn't call them sanctions, because I know no one would really use this word describing it, but it is kind of uh, what it is. Um, because uh, when, uh, as Veronica mentioned, some of the cities, uh, smaller towns actually, or the regions declared themselves as um, LGBTQ free zones. Um, the European Commission um, withdrew uh, some of the funds for these regions um, because they claimed that some of the European Union citizens are being, um, you know, uh, discriminated there. Uh, so I guess that is one of the examples of how the European Union reacted to what is what has happened, what is still happening, what has been happening in Poland for a long time now. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, and also, um, I think also on this matter that you just mentioned, Claudia, um, there are rumors about a full exit or a, like the possibility of Poland exiting the, the EU. And I also, I found a quote on Politico that I wanted to read you and I would like to ask your opinion about this. Yeah. Um, so it goes like this, Poland's illiberal democracy and strong words from its leading politicians on everything, from the rule of law to abortion and LGBTQI rights, makes the country an increasingly awkward fit with the rest of the EU. So this is sort of what is reflecting on these rumors and this um, statement that we've been hearing about full exit or withdrawal so, and all the names that you want to invent. But yeah, I would like to hear what you have to say about it and how it's circulating this within the country. Well, this is the fact that recently Poland uh, with Hungary was somehow against other European countries in some cases. And our policy is a little bit different than the core of uh, EU. 
but I don't think that full exit would be able to happen because our society is all for the European Union. We are we are having and we are still having a lot of funding from European Union, a lot of projects which are also important for us young people like Erasmus Plus and other grants of European Union are very important for us. So I don't think that will happen because that wouldn't be good for anyone. Yeah, I actually um, agree with Veronica, with, with Veronica. I don't really think that the poll exit will be happening because we had a poll recently here in Poland and uh, I don't want to lie, but I know it was a lot. It was either 75 or 80 percent of people that said that they are supporting the European Union. So that was a definitive majority. And um that means that a lot of people that are voting for the party that is um, now um, forming, actually parties that are now forming a ruling coalition, um, is supporting the EU. So I don't think the government would like to do something against 80% of the society. Uh, but the relationship between Poland and the EU um, itself, well, I guess it's a little... Uh, traveled right now i mean these are facts still because uh we couldn't find a compromise for a very long time concerning the budget lately with uh, with other european countries um it was us and the hungary that uh, were disputing the budget um so i guess a lot of polish people or some of the polish people are concerned about this relationship right now because it, it objectively it used to be stronger um so yeah i i can't really actually be objective in this matter because i surround myself with people that are mostly pro-european union just like our organization is um, so I can't tell uh, if people are really 100% uh, upset with the relationship Poland is having with the European Union right now. But 90% of the people that I surround myself with, they are. So, But I guess there are people that are happy with the relationship that we have with the European Union right now. Mm -hmm. As we said, we are a very polarized country also in this yeah country. really are but which country isn't right now let's be honest just look at the united states and their elections i think it's a it's a problem of modern societies actually mm -hmm. yeah i think also globalization and you know social media and everything that it's related has contributed to this and uh yeah i guess you also kind of are studying this in your studies and you have seen it also. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know how much is this influence in, in Poland and also how much it depends on the age of people. Uh, so like how much do they use social media and um, how, how actually they recognize themselves with the, like the public opinion, if it's really what is showed in the rumors, as I said, with Paul Exit, for instance, because everybody now is, thinking of the stereotype of Poland, like the whole Poland is thinking to leave the EU and that's kind of like what happened with Brexit. And um, I don't know, what do you think about, as you said, your peers, for instance, uh, you would say that they are more pro-European or you still think that there is like among this group, age group, also a percentage of people who are against this? Well, as Claudia said in the last poll, it was around 80% people who are pro-European. We love European Union. We basically base many, many things in Poland on EU funds and on EU projects. We are all beneficent of it as we are going on Erasmus Plus projects. We are, we are doing a lot of things and we are connecting our future also with the European Union. So I don't think that full exit would be possible even though last week um, decisions and the policy of uh, our countries could of our country could be a little bit emerging for us in this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. I just don't think that Polish people can live without European Union right 
now. And I mean, not the organization itself, but what we're actually um, gaining being a member of the European Union. So like Erasmus Plus pro projects, um, uh, the funding, uh, which is helping a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, institutions, just like universities and uh, some other organizations. And of course the entrepreneurs uh, so it's not like we are in the European Union and Polish people are pro-European Union only because we're getting money from the European Union. But I just can't imagine 20 year old people uh, having to stand in lines to, uh, to cross the border. Um, it's just, it feels impossible. And I think young people are mostly uh, pro-European Union and they will be gaining voting rights uh, more and more right now because they're they are turning 18 every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I think Polish people will be only more and more pro-European Union. I, that's what I'm guessing. I can't, of course, be sure of that, but... Yeah, um, well, we are so. European. It is part of our identity and I guess we want to change it. I hope we want to change it. <laughs> So if, if there were to be like a referendum text hypothesis, if they had a referendum like in Britain, in Great Britain, how, how do you think, like, would you, do you think that young people would go to vote or do you think there would be like a similar case to what happened with Brexit? I think they would go to voting in this case and they will vote for staying in the EU. Mm -hmm. if, if um, it would happen. Yeah, actually it's also worth mentioning that uh, the poll that we talked about that uh, 75 or 80% were pro-European Union just this year, uh, it's actually more uh, more people than voted yes when we were joining the European Union. So okay. uh, it's not decreasing, it's actually raising, so. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think so too, actually. <laughs> yeah. And um, how would you say that, um, well, we kind of mentioned it already, but um, do you think that in general people are, how are they perceiving all this situation in Poland? Like not people like you who are interested in politics and involved in this, but I mean, common people in general within the country, how would you say? Also in small difference between small cities, villages and big cities. How would you say there's some kind of degree of difference of reaction? Well, I guess for I both have, of us, it is difficult to say because we cannot speak about all of our citizens and we are living in, you know, this closed environment, closed environment of people who are basically living in big cities who have similar interests to ours. But mm -hmm. as we know as it's usually uh, people in big cities are more interested in politics and what is happening socially and people in smaller towns are less interested in what is happening. I guess it's like that everywhere. So this is how it looks like. Claudia? Yeah, I think that um, we can't really speak for everyone in Poland, but uh, there usually is what like researchers are showing that there usually is a difference between people living in the countryside or small town and people uh, living in a big city such as Warsaw, especially Warsaw, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, well, to be honest, right now, I think the biggest um, problem or concern for Polish people is still the coronavirus. So like, um, there's a lot, even concerning the protests right now, well, people want to, those who want to protest sometimes don't, sometimes don't because uh, they are afraid of the virus, of course. And even if they're not afraid of it themselves, they're afraid to pass it to their mothers, the fathers, brothers, grandfathers, everyone. Yeah. Um, so um, on the other hand, people that are not supporting the protests are mad. Uh, the protesters that they are doing this because of course they are blaming them for the um, for the numbers uh, of the cases we have daily which was uh, today it was around 12,000 um, so of course uh, the summer was uh, treating us uh, during the summer the coronavirus was treating us a little lighter 
Um, right now it's 12,000 cases as in every other country in Europe, I think uh, the numbers are rising and we just, uh, our government just introduced a national lockdown starting on uh, December 28th. So um, yeah, so people are in the middle of what's happening concerning abortion and LGBTQ and European Union. They're simply also uh, a virus which is complicating everything just as everywhere mm -hmm. yeah and i think this also has been reflected on other countries because you know the you just watch the news and you see the coronavirus and you rarely see what's going on besides the coronavirus everywhere i don't know if you have this feeling also with um with all the situation in poland if you have the feeling that your friends or international friends who live abroad if they really hear about Poland or if it's just neglected because of the coronavirus or, I don't know, American elections or other um, topics. Yeah, it's true. Well, actually the timing even of the um, abortion um, constitutional court ruling was, um, was a little unfortunate, let's say, um, because uh, this is actually the point. We had this so-called abortion compromise for years uh, because uh, people have very different views on that matter. So like there are people 100% pro, so like a uh, pro abortion, I mean. So like you have a choice, it's pro-choice or pro-life as, as you call it, um, as we call it. Uh, so I guess that everybody knew that touching like this subject and uh, actually pretty much ruining the consensus that we had um, will be a very bad thing. It, it'll be a really, it will create a really diff difficult situation in a society. So um, the fact that we're all talking about abortion in Poland right now during the coronavirus and pandemic just feels like a huge misunderstanding, mistake. I don't know. I don't know how to call it because I just think that the timing is really bad. And we must really underline also the fact that the protests which started after this ruling are the biggest protests in Poland since 1989. So it's a really huge scale of people who are on the street during coronavirus. And it's uh, actually, it's not only abortion anymore because people are joining uh, women in protesting other stuff as well. Because, well, you know, uh, you know how coronavirus, I know I'm, I'm going back to coronavirus again, but there are uh, entrepreneurs that are really um, happy with what happened with their businesses and uh, they are protesting as well. There's just uh, restaurant workers um, not being able to work, uh, protesting as well. So there are medical workers that are, you know, that have a lot right now going on, uh, but they think that they don't get enough support or enough uh, salary or just, you know, they're generally unhappy. They also join the protest. So I would say it's not only abortion anymore. And of course, you can you can find both people that are happy. I mean, I guess no one is happy with the coronavirus in Poland, mm -hmm. but there are just people who are less and more unhappy with the situation that we have right now, depending if they're working for um, one of the um, one of the um, one of the businesses that I already mentioned, like if they have a restaurant or a hotel, they're more unhappy than people working, for example, in offices, uh, because uh, companies still need office work or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I, that just came up to my mind when, when we were speaking about the, the protest and you were saying that it's the biggest protest since uh, basically ages. Um, what would you say, like, what was the difference between this protest and the one in 2016 that you were mentioning in the beginning, if there is any? I mean, uh, well, the difference is that this one lasts longer. Uh, also, right now, there are more people concerned about it because it's like, 
it's a bit different because back then it was supposed to make some changes it was supposed to penalize abortion but it wasn't so it wasn't so precisely told what would happen they weren't so sure about implementing it it was just the project of the bill and right now with this ruling it became more real than ever so many people went on the streets and it's also as Claudia said it's not only women who are protesting against the abortion bill there mm -hmm. is lgbtq organizations there are also other people concerned and unhappy with uh, the government and there are protesters who are against this whole thing. There, are protest there were even protesters against coronavirus who were all together in different manifestations, you know, mixing around in Warsaw during this, the biggest manifestation that was in, by the end of October. So mm -hmm. yes, it is, it is different also because also the times are different and the scale is much different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually agree. I think uh, 2016, it was just plans, discussions, they weren't sure if they were going to do it. So uh, women could still say no. Um, institutional court decision, like no one would, no one could have been consulted anymore. Uh, and I guess actually women were most concerned about this, that no one tried to discuss it. Of course, well, it's not that easy because the constitutional court can't really just discuss matters with people. The government can, but the constitutional court is just ruling, judging. So um, they couldn't really be like, oh, do you want us to, um, to tell everyone that it's constitutional or do you want us to tell it's unconstitutional? They ruled as they thought was uh, right. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it already happened. And like right now, um, actually the motto of the protests of women is this is war. Uh, so that means that they don't, they don't want to talk anymore. They don't want to discuss it. Um, it's not something that they can be consulted. Um, there will be no consultation. So like, they just, um, they just had enough. They, they are just giving the government a sign that there was a time to talk and that time has passed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's why it's, it's pretty impressive that although we are kind of um, limited by all these um, restrictions about Corona, uh, that um, all these protests managed to somehow show, like, make a voice be heard in this situation. So I'm sure so many people wanted to protest as well, but couldn't or weren't like uh, so sure to going out and risk their lives with the fact of Corona. Yeah, but just imagine if yeah. Veronica mentioned that these are the biggest protests since eight, 1989, and not even everyone that wants to protest is doing it, what would happen if everyone that wants to do it would actually do it? Yeah. One may wonder if there was like a, there would have been a real revolution or something, like something even bigger than what is going on right now. Possibly, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if you're having a look at the comments section, because I don't know if people have made, might have questions at this point before I continue it with mine. Because um, I cannot see them. Claudia? Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll look at it right now, um, actually, just as we speak. Yeah. Perfect. Um, um, but yeah. While we are waiting, I can also say about one also important topic when it comes to our recent protests. For 30 years, uh, Polish police was trying to regain uh, trust of the society because, you know, in People's Republic of Poland, it was a huge problem because of police brutality and connection to regime. And right now, for 30 years, they were trying to regain this trust, which was basically broken in the last couple of months because of this brutal because of brutality of police during the protest. And yes, and it's 
also an important thing to see that, that because right now this trust that has been lost would take again years to be regained. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, again, this is, it seems weird, but it's all connected to other countries as well, what's been going on in, in the US and also in France. So it, it's kind of everything that's hap that happens in one country echoes to other countries. So once again, we are all polarized and every matter somehow is present also in other countries. Um, I see that Claudia shared some of the questions. Um, maybe we yeah, can I have a look. So Giovanni is writing, you said Polish society is still quite conservative. Do you think that this plays a role in youth migration to other countries? And then he says, I'm thinking about the UK, for example, where Poles represent one of the biggest minorities with around um, 800,000 Polish citizens living in the more liberal country. Um, well, I guess that for some people it may be a reason. There are also the reasons of the higher salaries in different countries because people are also migrating because of economical reasons. We cannot say why our society in general, what are the reasoning of the migration but in general, it's because of economical reasons and sometimes also because of that. So we live in a conservative country, which is not suitable for many people. So yes, it can be one of the reasons. Uh, I guess I would like to focus on the UK part here, uh, the UK part of the question, because actually why there are so many Polish people in the UK is because mm, Poland joined uh, the EU in the 2000, 2004 and um, we had this um, transitional period concerning like um, working permits. So for example, Polish people were not allowed to go to uh, some European Union countries uh, and work as every other European Union citizen for um, a little bit of time. It was a few years. And uh, UK decided not to do that towards Polish people. So UK was actually one of the few, very few countries that we could, uh, that we could go to um, and start working immediately. Uh, so that's what a lot of people did. And um, I guess they took their families or friends with them. Um, so uh, the UK um, case um, is actually, uh, this is the result of, of why there are so many people in, uh, in the UK. Uh, but the migration right now, well, uh, uh, I guess it might be the reason, but I think it's also that nowadays, um, Polish teenagers and uh, young people, they just um, don't see, um, I don't know, getting a job or studying abroad as, a, um, as something that they cannot do. This is not, this is normal right now. It's, uh, you, you can do it easily. So that's what they're deciding to do because they want to broaden their, their, their horizons. So I, I guess uh, that would also be the case that we just uh, we just want to see the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I guess I can understand that. But um, you think maybe it's just about experiences like for a short period of like of time being abroad and then coming back to the country. Do they have the instinct, generally speaking, or would you say that they rather have like the, um, I don't know the goal to go out and just stay abroad from Poland? Well, there are a lot of different cases. It's impossible to say what are the reasoning and what period of time are people going to. Some of them are going just to study abroad and come back or to just work for a couple of years and come back to their country. Mm -hmm. Some of them are deciding that we are moving out of our families because we want to live in a different country. It's difficult to say. It's like with every country when you're migrating or citizens are migrating, it's many, many reasons why they are doing it and for what period of time they are doing it. Yeah, I was just... Yeah, I, about... I... Sorry. No, it's okay. I just, I just wanted to agree because we say that uh, life writes the best scenarios, the best stories. 
Um, so, you know, some people just, uh, my, just go abroad for like three months to work, for example, but then I don't know, they find the love of their life or something, they move permanently. So there's a million cases, million different cases. So it's really hard to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just quickly mentioning that, for instance, in Italy, we talk a lot about the thing that um, young generations tend to just leave Italy and don't come back. And this is something that we are experiencing like it's, it's a it's a crisis actually so that's i wanted to know if it was like the same well yes <laughs> yes we are experiencing it too because many young people are migrating but it's it's also not i i would prefer not to generalize all okay. of our migrations because that would be like yeah but it, we are also <laughs> an aging society so uh it's not only about polish uh, youth uh, leaving Poland, but it's also uh, we have more um, elderly people than we have children and teenagers. So I guess that's also a problem of many countries right now. Yeah. Um, okay, we are going out of off topic, I think. <laughs> um, that's true. <laughs> let's go back to the questions, maybe. Uh, so Filippo is asking if there are forces pushing Poland towards Russia as opposition to the EU in place. That's interesting. Well, uh, I wouldn't say that. I guess, Claudia. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I was just going to mention that um, there's a lot of, you know, I don't even know how to call it, like hybrid tactics. I guess um that are now influencing many countries coming also from many actors many different actors so i wouldn't actually say that there are some direct forces pushing poland towards russia um especially as i mean not especially but as the opposition to the eu influence because um Poland has always been uh, in the middle of Germany and Russia. And it's not that we have always been against these two countries. It's just uh, these two countries were always very powerful. So that meant that our situation was always kind of difficult. Um, so um, no, I wouldn't say so because after what happened in like, uh, you know, com during communism, when we were, um, um, well, not really exactly independent, we were kind of dependent. Country, yeah, um, yeah. Um, we were dependent from the USSR back then. Uh, I don't, I don't think Polish people forgot about it. Absolutely not. So uh, I don't think we would like that to um, repeat itself. Yeah, I think this is also linked to the European identity you were stressing before, especially in younger yeah. generations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and our government is really focusing on the independence of our country um, in many, you know, just many, many different uh, topics. So, like, they want us to be um, not to be uh, dependent on other countries uh, concerning energy and stuff like that. So... They don't like the. Uh, they don't like to depend on other countries, especially on Russia when we are yeah. when we are taking into consideration our history. Yeah, unfortunately, there are still people confusing Polish with Russian sometimes. It's pretty common. It's not only sometimes; it's pretty often. <laughs> <laughs> Even yeah. though we actually, because they say that the language is pretty similar, but we do not understand each other <laughs> at all. <laughs> Yeah, there are a lot of memes about this, but yeah, that's for another time, maybe. <laughs> um, okay, so then there's Christina asking, I would like to know about whether the women's protests are mostly independent women organizing to protest the new court ruling, or whether there is some particular feminist group that has existed even before or is long-term protesting Poland's conservative stance concerning reproductive rights, LGBTQ rights, or gender roles. That's a long question. Um, yeah. I don't know well, uh, <laughs> there are many feminist organizations in Poland. Right now, the current protests are led by the Women's Strike. It is not the organization, it's not the NGO, it's just 
the it was created in 2016 after the protests. These are just the women who are protesting. It's like the strike committee, which is protesting and which is organizing most of the protests. But there are also smaller organizations and smaller smaller groups of feminists who are organizing protests in their own, own uh, cities. Because you have to remember that it's not like only Warsaw is protesting, also many, many cities in Poland and also abroad are protesting. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah. I guess this is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess I have nothing to add to what Veronica said. Mm -hmm. Okay, then I don't know if there are many other, um, some other questions. Maybe I can just ask you if you have one message that would like to deliver at the end of this super interesting and vast conversation, because we actually touched more topics than we were uh, planning to. Yeah. Well, Claudia, I guess I'll give you the virtual yeah. floor. Uh, I actually, yeah, I actually know how it sounds, uh, but I think I would like to remind all of us to respect other people's values and beliefs. Um, because I get a feeling that we forget to do that sometimes. And uh, I would like us to remember that even if we disagree, um, we should respect each other and we should always, always try to talk to each other to find a solution before uh, we do anything else. Um, so uh, we all live in a democratic society. I mean, all as long like in Europe, I don't mean the whole world because of course there are different systems. Um, but let's remember that um, the democracy that we live in is um, a majority rule, but with the respect of the right of minority. And uh, that minority has a right to have their own voice and they have a right for that voice to be heard and taken into consideration. So no matter who is ruling the country at the moment, um, and no matter who you are supporting as a European Union citizen, just let's try, let's try to stay open-minded and um, each other and try to understand each other, even if it's difficult. Uh, because I think partially uh, this is why everything is happening in Poland right now, like all of the protests and, uh, and pretty much other subjects that were tackled, um, these problems I think come from us not really um, remembering that other people have a right to have a different opinion. Um, so I guess that would be my message to everyone today. I know how it sounds, I know how it sounds, but I think uh, we all know about it, we all hear about it from everywhere, but we just don't really live by these words. And, uh, and I think we should just remember about it. Actually, now when all of the countries are actually troubled. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can only add here the importance of NGOs, which are politi political NGOs, which like our organizations are connecting people with different opinions, different backgrounds. Uh, so we can also create a field for a discussion. And importance also for the good sources of, of information when it comes to strikes and everything, because as you said, there are so many gossips about what is happening in Poland that it's very important and we are very glad that we can meet here with you and talk about what is really happening from our citizen perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, I really like how you put it, girls, because it's what we try to do also as um, Genoa. So like to understand each other better as Europeans and try to build a vision of future together, you know, like accepting each other and uh, sharing our opinions that they don't have to be the same, of course, but we can just build a better reality by, by sharing our points of view. So that, that's really nice that you shared this, this message. Um, yeah, I think we don't have any much time. Um, but yeah, I would just like to thank you one more time because uh, I think the, this was really necessary mm, for our peers, for for us, for you, and for everyone who is watching us. Because it's it's good to to go to the source of information and 
And that's why we also do with when we write articles and we, we make sure that our informations are uh, cited and cited, cited sources and that we really um, defend information. We inform ourselves to inform other people. And I guess that's what you do too. So it's nice that we have this in common and it was lovely to talk to you and uh, to organize this. And yeah, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Bella. Really, it was. Thank you so much for having us tonight. Even even though it's a distance, we, we are actually yeah. in the distance, but. True, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we will meet in person soon. Yes, hopefully. So I wish you happy holidays. You too. Thank to you. Thank you so much. And see you soon. Let's hope 2021 will be better for us. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, I stopped recording. Uh, I stopped screen. <laughs> We are done. Okay. Well,